Who's introducing it to you? Me. You do it. Me? Yeah. Oh, you should do it like, by the way. What did, what's that? <laughs> do the fucking same thing. Okay, ready? Um, how does it start? Retro- by the way, podcast. Sponsored by Bucket 10. By the way, podcast sponsored by Bucket 10. Retro Sports Guys show. Okay. How did he do this? Is it him? No. It's, it's him, yeah. Okay. It's your, the Good Bit Podcast. The Good Bit. <laughs> Is that it? Right? The Good Bit. <laughs> right, right, okay. Um. <laughs> the Good Bit Podcast sponsored by Bucket 10. Retro Sports Gay is sold in Glasgow's biggest shopping centre. <laughs> and that will just be fading out. And go! Cool. And uh, welcome, folks, to the Good Bit Podcast. I'm joined here by my normal co host. Paul Rooney, oh wait, no, no, Chris Moffat. Oh, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's DDP, I'm back. Birdman is on his top 25, <laughs> that's confirmed. Birdman's man number one, gonna stick by, I'm Aaron Docker. Yes, <laughs> this is the Good Bet Movie Podcast, welcome. Episode six. six. Yeah, that's it, we said that at the exact same time. Wow. Episode six, and this, Aaron thinks I'm crazy, but this is very weird for me, because normally we're in college, we were in your house last time, or your place. Halls. Um, Halls. <laughs> All right, then. Where, have we done it anywhere else? Here, we've done it on your kitchen table twice. Well, that was by the way. What do you mean twice? Uh, round the table with Claudia and Craig. Oh, you yeah, did. That was episode two. Yeah, That's right. so, so we did it twice. Yes, face. So, but that that was through in the kitchen table, the dining room table area. This is the by the way studio. Well, sorry, we're yeah. sitting here in the we've room, invaded, and we have a sport on the telly. Tennis. It's Wimbledon. Wimbledon is on. What game is on right now? Puig vs Conta. Conta is a British player. She's um, winning. Winning. She won. Base. It's to repeat. Ben Teke. Uh, so and then before it was um, Bruce Willis and not Bruce Willis. Marcus Willis. Marcus Willis and against Roger Federer. A great story, but this isn't a sports podcast. I can't talk about it. Well, I'm just trying to compare the similarities between the two shows. Oh, by the way, and yeah. a good bit. Well, can I do a bit of by the way then and tell you about Bruce Willis? Which is a it's a brilliant story to do. do yeah. Uh, world number seven hundred and something. Well, why is he in Wimbledon? Because he managed to. He's but been down in the dumps and he's it's like a. Rise he's been down f- in the dumps. <laughs> now he's feeling better. No, he's been, he, was, he was coaching tennis. And oh, he decided his girlfriend made him like get back into a pro game. He entered Wimbledon like he entered Wimbledon like me and you would enter Wimbledon. Like he had to do pre qualifying. Oh, then he did qualifying. He won eight matches. To get him into Wimbledon, yeah. he then won his first round against like the world number fifty. Right, and then he he was and that was an upset in his own right. And he found himself on centre court, the biggest, the best court in the world, against the arguably arguably the best player in the world. Do you think you're a pretty big tennis fan? Yeah. Do I think he's the best player in the world? Yeah. Well, he's won the most Grand Slams, but I think Djokovic is the best. Djokovic, yeah. Ever. He's in all the ad belts and stuff. I mean, Andy Murray is the sentimental favourite, but he's in my heart. Yeah, so who's your favourite player, Andy Murray? Mm, Yeah. 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 I used to have a friend called Jamie Murray. Not the tennis player, but he just... That's Andy Murray's brother. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying... Oh, right. And I saw he was a tennis player, I was like, he's gone far in life. Turns out he's not the same person. (laughs) Anyway, yeah, so it's a bit of both here. It's by by the good bit, we're going to call this. Oh, really? Is that what we're doing? You want to address uh, the controversy, the elephant in the room. The what? Well, if anyone has listened to the By The Way podcast in episode 51... Paul was uh, a bit harsh, I think is the word, on, uh, on Adam's here, Paul. number one pick of his top 15 movies. You listen here. <laughs> we should give the backstory. We did the top 15 movies. Top 15. Aaron's number one was Birdman. Uh-huh. Paul does not like the, the movie Birdman and had some words. You can listen to it 43 minutes or something in on the By The Way podcast, episode 51. If you want you to have a problem, to Paul, <laughs> uh, with Birdman uh, is that you didn't get it which you've said and obviously you're not going to think it's a number one if you didn't get it see if you watched it and you got it and you enjoyed it but then you still thought the same then fair enough but you didn't get it you didn't understand it you didn't get all the things that are in it that are so meaningful and important (laughs) if you didn't get it 
I'm sorry, I don't accept your argument. Go back and watch, go back and watch it again with a magnifying glass, and you, well, you well, not an actual magnifying glass, but properly watch it, and then come back. Probably say the same thing, but like, yeah, there you go. I said to him we were going to watch it, but he didn't want to see it again. Why not? I've got the Blu-ray upstairs. We could do a commentary of it. Uh, Wouldn't that be spectacular? No, it would be, be like legendary. Here's another panning hallway show. I'm slagging off. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, I watch it too much. Yeah. It's Paul's number one changes often, but the last time I checked, I'm sure it was Step Brothers. That is not a number one. But Step Brothers is a classic comedy. Yeah, it's not a number one though. We would just say Birdman is as classic and and as well resounded like as well resounded favorite as. It's not a classic because it Step came Brothers. out in 2014. That doesn't matter. A film that came out recently, you can go. That was classic. Well, yeah, it's a classic. It's Hateful Eight. That was a classic. Force Awakens. That was a classic. Okay. Suicide Squad comes out that'll be a classic it doesn't matter if everyone else thought it was a classic I thought it was a classic yeah well, so do I but I'm it saying made, it, it made a difference it has a message it has a message I was mesmerised by it yeah fair enough and I don't like to pick things that everyone else picks because I'm just like that so I picked Birdman no, so good. Paul good for you good for you, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> are we making this uh, explicit now or are we keeping it oh, f- keep it in <laughs> I'm so tired. Yeah, what's wrong with you? Um, well, we've had a busy day. We have we've actually. Day. This is the f- first episode since the f- since since this is the first episode since the pilot good bit that we did on the By the Way channel, where we actually went and saw a film, and I've come back and we've not talked about it. We went and saw the film together. That's true, and that was the original plan of the whole show. And then we've, and we've done, done it. it. Yeah, we've <laughs> done it. <laughs> yeah. Because we saw Batman vs Superman separately, um, separately yeah. Um, Midnight Special was with Craig and Claudia. Yeah. Jungle Book was with l- separately. All separately, apart from Leanne and Ewan. Yeah. Um, which is the most listened to one, by the way, if you want to listen. <laughs> 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 the yeah. Civil War one, we were all separate. Yeah. With Mason. But in the top 15 thing. So yeah, you're right, this is the first one. And we saw Elvis and Nixon. Elvis and Nixon. With uh, Michael Shannon and Kevin Spacey. With the yeah, who are the Elvis and Nixon? Elvis was Michael Shannon. Yeah, and <laughs> I'm so tired. And uh, Kevin Spacey was Nixon. Yes. Yeah, it's hard Kevin to say Spacey. just the one name like he was. Do you think they picked Kevin Spacey because he's just so comfortable in a fake White House? Well, I think they saw yeah, <laughs> they right. saw House of Cards. They saw they looked good in a suit, and they went look in a suit. They thought he looked good in the chair. Yeah, and and, and when he could be the president, he could be another president. I'd be great if it's Kevin Spacey was really there. lazy casting, isn't it? Is it though? Kevin Spacey's one of the best actors in the world. I'm only joking. Oh, okay. Me? Sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was like, what? Who's supposed to be the best actor? Are you serious? Uh, and uh, Michael Shannon. We've not talked about it. We don't know what we thought. Well, we know we enjoyed it because we were smiling through the whole thing. Yeah, and we were um, and we were kind of kind of quoting it on the way out. Yeah. We were quoting. We were making noises. <laughs> we were just going, hey. Yay. So, what did you think, Chris? Thoughts? Oh, it was really good. I really liked it. Uh-huh. Why? Okay, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't a classic. I think we were saying. No, it, it was wasn't a, brilliant. It was. It was rather brilliant. It was really good. Yeah, I gave it a solid seven. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm the continue thoughts. Yeah, no, I got nothing really to say about it. I thought it was. It was witty. It was well written. It was. It seemed like it wasn't like a big project that they had, as if like years in advance they said one day Kevin Spacey you will play. President Richard Nixon. It was more like a. They just you want to come play. You want to play, Nixon? yeah, Michael Shannon. You, you, you kind of look like Elvis. You want to play it in a movie, and he went, yeah. And then they, they spent a few months researching it and getting into the character, and then they shot it over a weekend. But in a good way. In a good way. Yeah. And it's almost as if they didn't overdo it when they could have done it very easily. They could have made it's it. It's not overly long because at some point it did feel like it was getting a bit boring. In the first half. Yeah, the first half. I thought it was a very quiet film. Yeah, you're right. Well, there was no explosions. No, not that's in that's what that, happens not, in cinema these days. Not in that sense. I'll go on that later. But like it was, do you know, and do you know what I mean? It was there was a lot of not a lot of silences, but there was <laughs> the, the conversations that everyone had were not amplified at all. You just kind of need to listen to them. It's just conversations. Yeah, it wasn't like you mentioned Tate for late. A lot of it's com- conversations, but it's definitely not a quiet film. Everyone's like, "Hey, and listen here, listen." listen and there's here. levels in Hateful Eight where you're yeah. so tense at some point, and then you're back down to just relaxed yeah. watching the film. There was. I I was debating and I'll think I'll give it an 8 because I just liked the fact that it was like a little indie film it was like a B movie yeah it was just there I forgot I, I saw posters in it and I forgot, forgot it was coming out and then um, 
and now we saw it. Yeah. And it was it was good. I, I, it was I really thought, good, yeah. You know what I thought was really weak? Go on. Was the title sequence. Right, and the kids came up and it was like, Michael Shannon's playing Elvis in this film. Yeah, I just think they could have done so much more with it. It was like a... The song was really quiet. Do you not think? I don't remember. Do you not remember? Maybe that's the, the problem. Do you not remember just... Um, the, it was quite cool things happening on screen, but it was just really boring. Okay. A really boring title sequence. Different, <laughs> different that, colours than that. Yeah. yeah. Come on, do something. Do, <laughs> do something meaningful for a title, title sequence. And it could be a big film. And I'm paying attention to title sequences now because I was listening to an interview with um, my man, Quentin Tarantino. With your man. He was, your talking, boy. About, he was talking about how the, the, the title sequence for Pulp Fiction was like... Legendary. He listened to that song and immediately dreamt up this title sequence that was going to blast on screen after this scene. I just didn't think it was... Well, that's fair. And I, and now I keep going to a film, listening, remembering what he said about title sequences and the music, the how you should make it. Yeah. And um, it just wasn't... It was a bit... I don't think I thought about that Okay. Much. Well, I like the bit how, uh, before the title sequence, it was like moments before, really, or earlier in the, in the day. Yeah. Before they were going to meet, and then it goes back to whatever. I liked the whole... I thought the first half of the film was a little bit... It was slow, slow and boring, yeah. Um, but at the same time, you're sort of getting... You're warming up to it, so that's okay. But I was also getting to the point where I was like, just get him in the White House. Just go meet him. Just get, let him in. You Cause know, when, cause when we they, know you're going to let him in at some point. Yeah, and when him. they met, it was really funny and really and really nice to watch it, you were smiling like yeah they're, they're like, Elvis on. and the President were meeting each other and it was cool and it's a but that, they two need, big they needed, characters they needed to build it up that much that's true and then it, it did work in the end but I did feel like come but on but the whole thing were of the movie other than it being a true story and all that was seeing two superpowers of the world yeah. meet and seeing who was going to be more in control and it was kind of Elvis. Yeah, that's true. But you were you were excited because Elvis had gone through the whole movie, and um, I don't know that much about Elvis, but me I don't, neither. But I, I, but now I want to know more. I didn't know he was so ridiculously stupid. <laughs> <laughs> not stupid, but so uh, unique. Not stupid. Eccentric. Um, not stupid. That's sorry. Uh, not stupid. <laughs> well, he was a bit stupid. Elvis, you were an idiot. <laughs> he, he couldn't write. Well, yeah, yeah, I just thought that was a funny part. I didn't really think much into that. But I don't, I, I don't know how he played Elvis. If he played it well, because I don't know if there was a. I just remember I know Elvis from watching performances where he was on. Yeah. Was he really like towards the end of his life? Was he really like, I'm gonna do this and then nobody knows me. You know. It seems like this guy over here. Well, I think Michael Shannon is a guy who would. Terrible. I think Michael Shannon's one of the guys who would be like, I will become this man. You know, what I mean, he was, he was amazing, but really I don't. Good. Was Elvis like that? I don't know. Well, it must have been if, it, if you know. We'll have to watch interviews. Yeah, we should have done that. <laughs> we should have. Crap. But still, I don't care. We'll do that, and then the next episode we'll talk. About that. Well, I thought it was interesting because, like, obviously, that I'm pretty certain that he's, you know, Elvis was probably like that. Well, if that's the way he played him, obviously. you know. I mean, come on. And Kevin Spacey's just fucking brilliant. Well, I'm, I'm assuming Nixon was like that because yeah. Because and it's hilarious, and I just I think that represented a lot of sort of the world's. I say billionaires. I know the president isn't known for being a billionaire, but like major. Yeah, he, didn't, he didn't seem bothered about anything. <laughs> Go get me a whatever, damn it, Doctor Pepper, pepper damn it, Doctor Pepper, and yeah. some, and Vince M&Ms. McMahon, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I liked that a lot. I thought it was really good. I thought it was really. Once they got together, I loved. I it, it made it a lot. It made it a lot cooler to see. Yeah, that scene when they were in the room that that lasted ages. Was Wanted like, to go on longer though. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that's why I gave it an eight. I was, was going to give it a seven a until until that scene it was the, and the things that he did, the way they, the way they shot it, and yeah, oh, it was beautiful. There was a lot of people in the cinema laughing at bits only the first half. No, it was the second half they laughed. No, I know, but there were still people laughing in the first half, and I yeah. was like, I wasn't laughing, and I feel like that was a generational thing. Like elderly people will love this movie. So much. That's However, so there's... condescending. But you know what I mean. How <laughs> so condescending? <laughs> and what, how is that condescending? I don't know. I think what you meant was some of the jokes may go over our head in the first half were of the time, and we didn't get it. Oh well, yeah, but I'm. I think the elderly will appreciate it a lot more than we do. Yeah, I you know, know what I mean because they lived through that. Yeah, but I like I like films set in yeah, me too. that period, and I think they will look. It just looked really cool when they were yeah. using the telephones and the. It seemed, it seemed, it could have been modern. You know what I mean? 
but you knew it wasn't yeah because of yeah and the hell the hotel room oh yeah everything looked beautiful it was like the man have you not seen the man the man from uncle no if you told me to i've not seen it it's it's like that sort of it just makes the oval office it romanticized the time yeah okay and i bet if you went back there everything would be not everything what was that your mum my mum takes you oops um yeah i i also something i noticed as well not i noticed but i was thinking about during the film was how someone Elvis was an entertainer but he was a singer and a performer right mm-hmm. and how he had that much power who in this generation would have that much power to actually wind up well everywhere he goes people are just mesmerised by him he went into a donut shop and people are sort of st- they knew exactly who he was straight away I think I know he looks unique and like when you see that person that's Elvis but I'm just saying like someone today you know, apart from the president or whoever when you when they go Anywhere, like a, an artist. Anywhere, yeah. I think today is it not um, in terms of power? Is it not Beyonce? Justin Bieber. I don't think this one. Beyonce, do you not think she? That she has such an aura about. Her? Yeah, but I, I still wouldn't. I don't. I don't like Beyonce. If she walked in, I wouldn't be like. I don't, I don't not like Beyonce. I just don't like me. I'm not interested. I'm the meaning. I'm not bored. I prefer but she, Rihanna. But she has a. She has a lot of power. Yeah. She can control what she wants. She knows she she beats everyone in court, you know she's. I feel like if Beyonce said, "I want to meet the president right now, today, please." Do you think she'd get it like that? Not like that, but did Elvis get it like that? No, a couple of hours. Yeah, but. Yeah, probably she would be able really? to. Really, what about Andrew Weiss? Uh, DiCaprio. I guess. Yeah, or um, someone more like uh, Mel Michael, Michael Caine or something. Mel Streep. Yeah. Mel Street, everyone loves Mel Street. Or if they just say, like, I, I want to go to, like, wh- drive up to the White House and say to the security guards, let me in at the Oval it's Office Beyonce. at two o'clock. Who do you, you know think, I mean? think they'll let in if they go, um, Mr. President, um, it's Beyonce? Or Mr. President, it's Mel Street. Mel Street. Beyonce, I think. Beyonce, yeah. Fuck her off, so. Mel Street. Let Mel Street, but I want to talk to her. <laughs> They'd probably be interested in Mel Street. Does Barack Obama know who Mel Street is? Barack Obama, she's got an honorary like White House thing. Yeah, okay. I'm okay. I don't know that, but okay, fine. I suppose Elvis. I don't know. That's a good question, actually. Because Elvis never had a bad White House thing. Until, like, <laughs> he had a lot of badges, apparently. Yeah. He was sick of getting the badges. Oh, uh, I don't know. He was, I didn't know he was that obsessed with law enforcement. But was he? I thought he was just insane. He, he, he was a bit nuts. He came across a bit nuts. <laughs> that's, that's what I meant. Yeah. A little bit stupid. <laughs> stupid. No, well, he, he was a bit ditzy. Yeah, he was. No, of just, course. I just want to be a protect the citizens of. And then, like, so, and then, like so, he's, he gets told no, and he's like, "All right." So this is a true story about um, Elvis finding his way into the White House to to talk to Nixon, President Nixon about becoming a special federal agent undercover undercover to which, is, which he laughs at because everyone knows who Elvis is no yeah that's the story in case <laughs> simple tale simple tale it wasn't, it wasn't really simple tale at heart I like that yeah but they added it I really liked it I'd give it, I'd give it an 8 a solid 8 I'd give it a 7 just because I was a little bored during it but I, I did laugh a lot and, and I enjoyed it and I was smiling and had an I think after. if the ending hadn't been so strong I would have given it a lesser but it was so good at the end <sighs> last scene was great yeah and, and it's just the power so of the funny the whole, can we do the thing, the thing no one can see it though no one can see it but I'm just going to do it anyway where he said um, no no I want to do it just hit down on my mouth okay harder 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 hard. let it all out let it all win and then it's what he did <laughs> <laughs> he did this thing where he, he made Nixon slap his knuckles just get caught. No, that hurt. I hurt my fingers. Did he? Like sorry. Just get snap and hurt. Snap, and then he sort of took them away and sort of did some sort of cobra thing. <laughs> <laughs> but like, we, were, we were coming at the cinema doing all the Elvis mannerisms, like the click and the point and the. the and he did like sort of force thing to the eyes and then of, like he's, he's casually sort of, walked away. The way he sort of like, like, James like Bond. said bye to people was like he sort of put his hand up to their face and sort of goes. I really I feel respect you what you guys do with this country. And then and just walk away, walk yeah. away with his hand, yeah. <laughs> like there's, he's dragging your soul out of your eyes. It was like. really cool. Djokovic fell over. Jo- did he? Yeah. Oh, let me watch this in slow motion. Oh, he fell. He slipped oh, right on his right backside. Oh, this is a look at the right audience. The They're all like, oh. <laughs> this is, no one can see this. this anyway, is terrible. anyway um, terrible oh, television. Please. Yeah. So you gave it an eight. I gave it a seven. Uh, would you see it again? Yes. I would fast forward to the last scene. Uh, yes, but very I'd, good. I'd film. watch that scene again. Yeah, 
I like the how the fact that I've not heard about it in anything actually. Yeah. Like, you haven't seen the trailer or anything. Totally indie. Cool. Love well, it. that's good then. We we had a good day. We had a good day. We, had, we went to Nando's. We had a Nando's. We had a catch up. Kinda. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. I know. But, but, but I felt we had, we had I felt as if there was a hole in the in the catch up because we never talked about the film. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's like we had to avoid that. We came at the cinema and had to think of something to think about or to, uh, to talk about because we were thinking about the movie. Yeah. So. Yeah. But now that's out of the way, so how have you been? No. <laughs> um, what have you been watching then? What have I been watching? Because we're going to do another episode after this, um, a movie tag question thing. But this is just I'm sort of movie, that. movie catch up sort of thing. Well, you see, um, that's my issues. See, um, is it? Oh, yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> you see, the last couple of um, weeks, the whole summer, I said last episode we hadn't, I hadn't been to the movies or seen any movies because it's been such good weather. <laughs> now the weather's been pish. Pish. And so I have been watching series because that's the thing to do in summer, is it not? Just sit. Binge watch a series. Binge watch when you've got time. And I had time and you've got time is the is the uh, opening title sequence song for Orange is the New Black, which I I watched all of, I watched from season two, I'd seen season one, so I watched two, season two, season three and season four. There's 13 episodes in each season. In the span of what, two and weeks? And they're an hour each. Jeez. And I watched them about a week. But was it worth it? It was absolutely worth it. I love that show. Yeah. Oh. Season three is at the time everyone was saying, Oh, season three is rubbish, nothing happens in season three. But when you watch season four, it's so dark and so amazing and then you just sort of wish you could go you could go back to season three when it was all happy and, and season three is quite fun. Oh I see. You know, but like um if you don't know Arms is New Black it's about a woman's prison, basically. It's basically Shawshank Redemption, but it's drawn out to the series, so you'd hate it. And um, <laughs> oh, season four is just the post. Everything goes to bollocks. I'm not going to give any spoilers about. No, it. I should watch it, but it's you one of the really, many shows I should watch. I honestly think watch it. It's um, you'd be you'd be hooked from the first episode because really? the way they do it is I've told you this. At the end of every episode, it cuts to orange at a place where you're like. It cuts to orange. It cuts to just orange. That's orange cool. Screen. But, um, because orange is the new black. There you go. Nice. Um, it's an it's based on a true story. It's tr- about a woman uh, who went... Everything else these days. Uh, yeah, true. And you hate that fact, don't you? No, I hate it. I just think it's... Pish. It's milked. Yeah. Well, no, it, well, it's really milked because they've made a series out of it. It's yeah. not all true. <laughs> yeah. I think the first series is true. No, um, what was I saying? Yeah, they cut to orange at the end of every episode and it's always a, oh my God, moment. And so you just have to watch the next one to find out what happens. Yeah. And to find out what happens, to find out what Well, that's happens. the beauty of a great show. But it really does it, obviously, but you don't mind. You, you can see what it's doing, but yeah. you've got to find out what happens. Well, if it's next. all on Netflix and you can just watch the next and one, it's not end, as if you need to wait a week. The end of... Well, I've got to wait a year now. A year, whole year? For the next series. Oh, my God. The end of series four is an absolute... What the f*** is going to happen next? Cut to orange. No! Is that it? What? There's not, there's not an episode. There's not, that's the last episode. <laughs> and I can't wait until another year. It's a total cliffhanger. Okay. I don't know what the hell happens. Oh. But you know what's going to happen with me is... You're going to fall away from it. I'm going to forget about it. It's going to come out and I'm going to go, oh yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not going to watch yeah. it. So I'll never find out probably. <coughs> you will. I'll watch it. You will eventually. I'll make myself watch it. What have you been watching, Christopher? Well, I, I'm normally a, more of a serious guy. If I've had a, a good things. sitcom or whatever. By the way, I my I, what episode was it? Series f- episode four. I said I'm looking for a new sitcom to really get emotionally attached to. How I Met Your Mother. Oh, people have been telling me to watch that. It's excellent. It's really funny. It's really good. I can see it being. It's the one. I could it, marry it. Yeah. You know, I, I said like my routine. Well, my old routine was dinner then two episodes of of that show the show I'm on at that moment so yeah like friends it friends. mucks up your life when you finish the series totally you don't know what to do with yourself <laughs> yeah so what I used to do have dinner two episodes every night really of something you're a creature of habit so I said right okay today How I Met Your Mother that's what we'll do right How, what is it on Netflix Netflix is it and then I've never done it I just forgot is it I, on Netflix it's on Netflix so I said right no I don't want to go the, the whole day and I've not watched anything from it so I watched one episode in my bed. Is it good? Forgot the next day to watch it after dinner. So I went, okay, I'll watch the next one in my bed. That's the new thing. Is it good? It's excellent. Every night, one episode before sleepy bites. 
Really? Yeah, that's what I've been doing the past. I'm um, on episode eight now, past week, and it's good. And I'm thinking it's really good. But is it I'm funny. Thinking, that's yeah, it's very funny. Did I find it funny? I don't know, man. It's got a laugh you're, track. You're, you're, yeah. Uh, your uh, your comedy sense is all different from everyone else's. It is yeah. Well, I do like Step Which is good, but... Oh, you like Step Brothers now, do you? I, I told you I liked it. It's never number one. It's never number one. <laughs> oh, I don't care what you have to say, but it's never number one. Well, you know, you, you, I'm starting to like the characters, and I'm thinking, that's just season one I'm on. And season one on a show... I don't like what's his face Who everyone said I look like. Who? Ba- Barney Thompson. Neil Patrick Harris? Yeah. You kind of do look like Neil Patrick Harris. I never thought of that. I don't think so. Don't no, he's it. really funny. He's really funny in it. He goes, his catchphrase is legendary. Tonight will be legendary. That's not funny. You no, know, when I do it, but if it's if it's timed right in the show. <laughs> Stop funny. And he goes, how have you met Ted? And he introduces Ted to like a girl or something. Is Ted the big guy? No, that's Marshall, who's played by um, George Jason Segal. Isn't he in I Love You Man with Paul Rudd? I think so. He's really funny. I like him in that movie. And the girl who plays Robin in the front. I don't know. I mean, I've only seen the first eight episodes, so I don't know what's happened. I don't know who dies. I don't know who leaves. Oh, really? Robin, the girl who plays Robin See, in, the, in the first season, funny, is gorgeous. Is it still worth a watch? I mean, it's not as funny as Friends or anything like that. Because I've been told it's just good, actually, as a story. It's a good story, yeah. It's, it's very inventive because it starts off in the year 2030. And it starts off with Ted telling his kids how he met their mum. And it goes back to 2005. And every episode there's a different story on the road to getting to meeting his wife, who later becomes their mum. And then the mm. last episode... He meets her. He meets her and then the story ends after telling his kid, because they've had the final episode. So you, you spoil it, you totally know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen, no. So you don't it. know what's going to happen? No, I've seen it. I've just started. But you... Well, okay. Even okay. though it's finished it last year, and I kind of saw it at the time, but I didn't, obviously I didn't know... Yeah. What was going on? I don't know. All I can remember is like a picture of that. So you're watching How I Met Your Mother. How I Met Your Mother is my current sitcom, and I do that every night in bed. Well, there you go. <laughs> take that clip out. That is it, and I do it every night in bed. Um, <laughs> I, I was funny. We were saying at the start of the show, we were saying, "Where have we done it? We've done it in your kitchen table. <laughs> we've done it in here. We've done it in halls. <laughs> we've done it in halls. We've done it in." Uh, in uh, the college, college. <laughs> never do it in the by the way studio in the cupboard we've been in the cupboard um, do the podcast folks yeah that's all we're talking about and nothing else this is a PG show okay movie wise I've been watching lots of movies which is good for me because sometimes because it's like longer and you know I don't like I can't sit in my backside for more go on then what have you been watching well I don't know if I mentioned Money Monster last time but I saw Money Monster that was alright The Nice Guys oh. with Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe go and see that movie that's going to be in the top ten of, of the year. Oh, I want to see. Excellent movie, really, really good. It had a rush hour feel to it. I had the sort of goofiness of even the Naked Gun. Uh, Ryan Gosling is one of my favourite actors. He is hilarious, and Russell Crowe's voice rivals Kevin Spacey's voice. Yeah, really great voice. It's really good. So yeah, I gave that a eight point five. Same wow. as Jungle Book. Yeah. Wow, really good movie. I liked it because that's kind of my style. But I think I will. I, I know how I'm gonna like it. I've yeah. seen the trailers. It's really good. Soundtrack's great. It's in the seventies. Ah, oh, it's good. Still at cinemas, go see it tomorrow. Would you go see it again? Don't know. Maybe. It, it's, it's two hours, it's long. Yeah. But I'll see. And then uh, <laughs> last night, for my dad's birthday, happy birthday, dad, um, but my mum was at Rihanna on his birthday. Did she? So the Did day she after. Rihanna? Yeah, she was a bit disappointed. Yeah, apparently it was, she didn't really interact with the audience. And at all. It, she said it wasn't a show. She was just a. She just came out and sang her songs and went away. And She's was, in a bad mood now, and it, did you hear about Wembley? No. She thought she could Rihanna. You know Rihanna's big, but Wembley? She tried to play Wembley, she sold about half of the tickets. It was yeah. half empty. And apparently she's just sort of she turned up late, she went early, she was like singing, not really interacting with the crowd and left early. But well she has the weekend supporting her, who Paul and I love. Oh right. And he never showed up. They never showed up. <laughs> she just pulled out. What, to, from Glasgow? From, from I don't know, from the whole tour I think. Really? So there was no support act, and so Rihanna just kind of walked on and went, How you doing tonight? Sang, started off with Love the Way You Lie, which she only sings half of because the other half is Eminem, and then sang like an old song and then all of her new stuff, and then like one other old song, and that was her. Oh, I'm not so, sure about that. I mean, I like Rihanna, a lot, she's got a lot of good songs. I think she's, her, this tour has been a bit of a disaster, I've heard. Yeah, man. But you know what's been a, a fantastic tour, and I can't wait to be part of the tour. It's Tina Park. Tina the, the 1975. Yes. I wish I'd gone to see them in Glasgow. Yeah, me I was, too. I, I, I can't wait to see them in Tina Park. 
1975 or Five Star becoming my favourite band? Oh, honestly, I, they give me hope for... Um, <laughs> the music industry. The, no, they do, because I'm into old music, but yeah, no. I know, they are using things from the 80s and they're using... They're actually having meaningful... This is the something. 1975, in case you missed that. The 1975, I think they're insane. Their new album is insane. What we were yeah, it's great. What we were saying earlier on is like every single song you go through the same pattern to loving the song. You start off by going, yeah. "What in the name of God is that?" That's then weird. it's like, "Nah, it's kind of weird," but you know, yeah. Then it's like, "Not bad, quite like that song." And then you can't stop. Then it's like, "This is a really good song," and then you just can't stop. It's amazing. To it. It's like a routine every night. Honestly, but, but that's the good thing is. When you listen to the 975, when you listen to I listen to the new album, or bits and bobs that heard of it, and you're like, "Well, that's a bit weird." Yeah, and I don't like that. But the even reason, their old stuff, I, but it's because it's different. Yeah, it's different from all the pish. Yeah, that's in clubs and all the Justin Bieber. But it's all right, but it's not got much stuff behind it. But then, uh, yeah, no, Justin Bieber's great. But then you know, there's Team the Park on the TV now. Really? Or is that Glastonbury? There's an advert on the TV for some sort of outdoor concert. Nah, it's Glastonbury, I saw Jeff. Uh, yeah, Glastonbury. Okay, I thought I'd go next year. Um, what's good? Can you explain to me what the difference is? What? Glastonbury is what? A festival, a music festival. Where? In uh, England. Oh, I see. And then what about. Southern England. So in Antina Park is Glasgow? No. No, it's where I live. It's. Um, I watch it in Scotland, I mean. Persia. Okay. Then so where? What about BBC's out. Big Weekend? That moves about. Okay. But they have kind of the same people in all of them. Uh, no, Glastonbury is more of a family festival. So they've oh, got I a see. big eclectic. Nice. So it's like Ad- like Adele and then and Coldplay. And Coldplay that. and Queen. Oh really? Queen played. Um, who else played? Fleetwood Mac. They no, they played Isle of Wight last year. That looked insane. You like them, don't you? They are. I was telling someone the other day. I feel remember? like I could get into them. Then I would. You know where most of the um, inspiration for the new night sound. Five album I'm assuming on. you're going to say Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mac. You, you loved Fleetwood Mac. The you know how 1975 songs are very like, you've got intricate little things and it's all there's loads of things. Produced. You like little moments in each little, song. Yeah. 1975 were the first. No, Fleetwood Mac were the first band to sort of have a, one of their, members was also produced the records by yeah. producing the records means they decide what sounds go on it. Okay. You know they are, and they also write the songs. For example, Rihanna. I don't think she writes. Does she write the songs? No idea. Say, say Justin Bieber. Right. Definitely doesn't write his songs. He he'll write a bit of his songs. Yeah. Say say he wrote. Let's just say he wrote. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. On a guitar. He'll then. At my absolute jam, by the way. Uh huh. He'll play that for his producers. Yeah. And the big boys, and then they'll take his vocals and they'll put all this weird stuff on it. Yeah. And they make it a record for clubs. Nineteen seventy five. Put everything on themselves. They Sweet. choose what goes on. Fleetwood Mac were the first sort of band to produce themselves yeah. as well and they made loads of cool sounds and you'd love them well we made a short film last year and I was struggling to put in a song, song and you suggested a fleet of gold dust woman uh huh it's a good I mean, you know it's not like true well, but that, it's just that, like a really that, interesting song that's you one of the well known ones as yeah. well yeah and um, I was telling someone the other day and I saw Fleetwood Mac Fleetwood Mac live last year I almost get emotional talking about it I talked about it yesterday. I won't get emotional now. But honestly, <laughs> you won't get emotional. <laughs> I won't get emotional now. Honestly, listen to this. So it's in the SSCC. Yeah. What's it f-ing called? The Hydro. <laughs> the new place. <laughs> the Hydro. The SSCC, BC, ABC, one, two, three. It came only came out like three years ago. <laughs> uh, the Hydro. And uh, what happened was, we went in and we were up. It was filling up and it was full. And everyone was waiting, and the, all the lights were up. And the, the stage was set. The drum kit, guitars, and I'm like, "Oh, heart's beating! Oh my god!" Um, and then um, they're playing this sort of nice guitar music just in the background, yeah, yeah. and there was this sort of cricket music, cricket noise, like a whoosh, 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 yeah, whoosh, yeah. And slowly the guitar music faded out, and the cricket noise, whoosh, whoosh, and all you could hear was this cricket noise, and everyone sort of going, "What the hell?" And then all the lights go out, complete darkness. You, I couldn't see a thing. I couldn't see the person next to me. And this cricket noise is playing. It's like, whoosh, 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 and everyone's like, oh, what's going on? And this is playing the cricket noise. And then you can't see the, any, you can't see the stage. Certainly you can't see the stage. And then this <laughs> starts this dr- bass drum. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, what? Who's that? Are they on stage? I can't see. I can't see. And the cricket noise fades out. And, it's, <laughs> and everyone's clapping. And then it starts with the chain, which is like, <laughs> this guitar wrist. Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, well, what? Are they on stage? I can't. And then 
this big chord hits and all the lights shine on the stage and all members of Fleetwood Mac are there and I just broke down into tears like oh f <laughs> I did not think I would but honestly it went and they were there that would be amazing I was, I was gone I just I just it absolute just shivers and tears bumps and tears and, and I was get I was, the person next to me was like oh my god are you okay and I was like oh, yes <laughs> and then they start singing harmony I will show you it the live things are on YouTube but honestly best moment one of the best moments of my life flew with Mac that's a good story and they played Isle of Wight last year but they're only making one public appearance this year. Oh, really? In Dodger Stadium in um, America. Please. You know how much a ticket is? $140. $1,000. Jesus. And there's like 100,000 seats. But they can aff- they can put their prices up because they know they're going to fill it. Yeah. Unlike Rihanna, who's not going to sell Wembley. Half tickets in Wembley. She's already at ha- uh, Hamden. Yeah, Kinda. Hamden's little. Compared to, compared Wembley. to Wembley. Yeah, Wembley's 80,000. Don't, don't think Hamden's you can 50, sell at Wembley. And Unless you're Fleetwood on Mac. Sh- and not put on a show. Yeah. I know. That's a good you know? point. And then, and then being a huff. I'd be in a only, huff they, about they, it. only sold 45,000 seats. I mean, come on. <sighs> yeah. So it takes me out. I quite like her, but she's making me angry now. Let's go back to films. <laughs> Should we talk about Game of Thrones? What can I talk about Game of Thrones? Please do. Um, you've not, you've not I want to run down my films, just saying. We could do that. Oh, sorry. You, can, you keep going. No, okay, I've got stuff to say, so you say this point first. Right, well... Um, like I've been saying I've been watching the series and the other one is Game of Thrones and I've been watching the new season 6 series and those of you who are watching it or have watched it what yeah will appreciate how amazing the last two episodes were so have you been keeping up have you been watching every am, stuff I now have to wait a year until right so do you then binge watch like series is, is, is. I binge watched the first f- four series um, when two years ago and then I caught up so Damn. I so I watched I'd watch them with you if you I want. Feel like you, yeah, but Do you have the box No, I, I, I don't have access to them. Do you have any of them? No. Nope. Do you know a Sky? Not really. A kind of basic Sky. We'll have a look. Um, because it's in... Actually, Dad, he watches it. Yeah, yeah, he can download them. If you've not watched it, I recommend it. Gre- Gregor has opinions on it. Our, the rap chat. Yeah, our rival, our rival podcast. Not really. I mean, they're just better than us, aren't they? <laughs> no. no. Oh, sorry. That's just Pish. Like, pish. Pish, they're pish. No, we, we respect them. Okay, yeah. But we don't listen to them. I don't listen to that, but... But you know what? I accident- an hour and a half? I accidentally, clicked, I accidentally clicked on episode... <laughs> what did I listen to this? I, I accidentally clicked on episode 6 of the night. Don't watch it. And, don't listen. And it was really interesting. Like, was you it? You can learn a lot from it, yeah. Oh, but there's two geniuses. I'm just not going to listen to it. I'm We're geniuses. In, in, Elvis in, and Nixon enthusiasts. We're basically Elvis and Nixon. We basically are. I'm Kevin Spacey. I'm oh, Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> You're the king. I'm king. Well, I'm Prezi, right? Game of Thrones, go. We're running out of time. Um, yeah, um, Gregor seems to think that um, it's all drawn out and he doesn't like how every the storylines take ages to develop, but... I, I, I won't like I, that. I just, no, let's all listen to him. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> no, no, it's just... You're just so invested in all every house. It's all houses, and you, you, if you figure out the, the thing... Okay. I can understand when you've not watched it and everyone's talking about it, everyone knows everything about it. You yeah. can't be bothered. I know. I can. I can believe it's you know, fucking brilliant. I can't be. You, I from my perspective, when everyone was loving it and I didn't watch it, I was like, I can't be bothered learning about all these stupid houses and people. But honestly, once you do, and you get it, you're you're no way you're gonna not want to watch it. Yeah. The last two episodes. I mean, I mean, and if you catch up for series seven, Insane. the whole atmosphere of we know. We knew episode nine was going to be called Battle of the Bastards. Right. We knew there was going to be a big battle, and we knew who was going to get. We didn't know who was going to win. It was like it's like wrestling. Yeah. It was literally like we know it's fake, but we don't know who's going to win. Yeah. It was like that. And I'd love to sit down and talk to you about wrestling. Uh huh. <laughs> but I'd love to talk to you about Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. But literally, one one episode in series four or something, it was going to be a trial by combat. There was going to be a trial by two warriors who we knew the characters very well, but one of them was going to die. And we knew tonight one character was going to die because they were going to have a trial by combat. And See, that's going to be brilliant, isn't insane. it? Insane. Was it really tense and stuff when you're like and, and ripping the, the arm of your seat? Stuff? Oh, and then you're tapering. And yeah. Then you're, they're, they're getting horrible things done to them and you're like, no! And you get you cry and it's honestly, if we can watch it tonight, I would love to take you through. I doubt we can, but I'll, I will try. Cause right. I kinda, I There's my Game of Thrones rant. Also the last episode of season six. If you've not caught up, catch up and watch it because it'll literally blow your mind. I heard it was just crazy. Literally. Uh, I guess someone's head could blow it out then. 
No comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to run down films I've seen recently and you can comment oh, I on I bet it. the veins on my forehead are pulsing. I can't it. tell. Why? Because I've just had a big yeah. Yeah. passion. Um, we, we, you totally cut me off at one point, must have. Which is alright. I think, right. I think we just because we're talking a about, tangent. Yeah, because we're talking about nice guys. And then uh, I saw Independence Day Resurgence last night. Which was pish. Oh, it wasn't pish, but it, it just it wasn't it wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> was just wasn't very good. It's all right. Like I, I came out, and my dad really liked it. And my sister was like, it was good, but you know it just wasn't great. I, I don't know. My mum liked it. It was good. No good pushing. It was it was all right. It was all right. I gave it a five. It was all right. That's bad. Um, In my book, that's bad. The first one is really good because it's there's no specific part of the first one that I think is particularly good. Like it's not got great acting and great action sequences. It's just good. Okay. Will Smith is cool because it's ninety six, in his prime doing uh, Fresh Prince, and then Jeff Goldblum's young and hot, and then there's um, Will Smith not in this one. No, there's a picture of him. It's his son who's in it, not Jaden. His son. Not Jayden. Who was really good. It wasn't Jaden. It was his. Right. Jaden's not good. Um, but definitely not. It has Karate Kid movies, alright. In uh, what's that movie he was in, with it just with him and Will Smith. Oh, thing. After Earth. Yeah, I heard that was like shockingly bad. Best acting um, ever. Okay, it was fine. It's just, it was, it was as if they were trying to rehash Independence Day that was good just in for the 86, cash. just for the cash. 20 years later, I like the idea, but when, see disaster movies, I get them, I get it, there's maybe a disaster movie, like Godzilla, right? All oh, right. Where it can, where you can blow up a city, and it's fine. But seeing a film like this, right, you don't need to blow up the world. To get that impact, is it, they blow up a building, right? That's good enough. So after the building's gone, I was like, "Oh, cool, they just blow up a building." The next scene, it's like the ground coming up, and all the cars are flying everywhere, and and, and there's fire like in schools and churches, and there's like helicopters like crashing and stuff, and it's too much. Mm. It's too much. Mm. I don't mm. care. I lose the interest because it's totally. It's not well. Done. It's just too. Yeah. Much. Then the alien. Spoiler for the new Independence Day. The alien. It's the same sort of thing that happens from the first one, where the guy goes into the uh, into the, the room with the alien, and the alien sort of takes over his mind, and it's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And then the first one, after the alien disappears from his mind, they go to the next scene. Not on this one, no. They try to shoot the alien, and the glass breaks, and the alien dodges and does a forward roll, and then stands up on his feet and picks up a gun and starts shooting at the people. And I'm like, what am I watching? Am I watching a, a cartoon? <laughs> on Nickelodeon at 7am on a Sunday morning was it badly animated very badly animated was it oh man I don't I, I can if they're trying to get the impression that the alien is a man then they got that impression but aliens shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't be people um, they're aliens yeah the movie Alien is one of my favourite sci-fi movies ever because it's done right I'm not seeing it it's really good yeah I'm not um, seeing it but you know I just didn't and then there was no sense of care for any of the characters I didn't care about them and the first one I did and this one I was like no Jeff Goldblum has just gotten old now, and, and the guy who played the uh, Space Lord or whatever from Spaceballs, right, is the president in the first one, and he's a really cool guy in the, in the first, he's a really cool president, not like Nixon, but he's really cool, mm-hmm. and then in the new one, 20 years later, he's like, not the president anymore I guess, but he's, he's like old, in it. and he's got a beard now, and he can hardly walk, and he's in a coma or something, and then like all of a sudden one of the scenes, his daughter's going to go fly away, and all he hears this voice like, no, you don't have to do that, darling. And he's he's, sh- he's clean shaven, and then we can walk fine. And I'm going up there, and then he's back in the he's like a pilot again. Sounds like a, just and a I was Hollywood just like, disaster. Come on, what's that thing you said? It was hash for the cash. We made it up. A, we made up a hash for the cash. You, you, you said was it me? Just for the cash. Um, rehashing things for cash. rehash just for the cash. Yeah, that's going to be a new label we put on things. <laughs> the good bit rehash for the cash. So the good bit we get paid a lot for the, for these episodes. That's what we're doing. In- Independence Day two was I just a rehash for the cash. Rehash for the cash. Ka-ching! Why don't we make a th- Why don't we make a sound bit? <laughs> Where it, we can just, and then I'll go rehash for the cash. We'll get Paul to do it. Rehash for the cash. <laughs> Uh, or I could just do it. Oh, you could just do it. Because um, Paul doesn't like Birdman. There's something up right. I'm going to talk about it in the next episode because I really need to get into detail about it. I watched um, Flight with Denzel Washington. Oh, yeah. The first 25 minutes of that film are amazing. Because it's the flight. But then the rest of the film. It's literal like in, flight. In court. Literal flight. So court. slow. Yeah. Denzel's a great actor. You know, I know that's I know that's that's the movie about. I, I know that's the movie about. I know yeah. that's what happens, and so I didn't watch it. <laughs> I've watched the I've watched the 
the, the crash scene on it's, YouTube. It's amazing. Yeah. I was like, this is going to be brilliant, and then I was so disappointed. Well, <laughs> it's just what, an owl kit. I mean, how could you think that was going to be brilliant? Because it's a flight. And you oh, know but it could have been interesting, though, because he, cause he was drunk when he done it, right? Yeah. And it could have been cool. They could have done, like, an investigation and stuff. Wasn't it not they, like they, that? They just, he tries to get clean and fails, like, three times and then goes to court and then admits that he was drunk. And then that's it. For, like, two and a half hours. And I like Denzel a lot. The Equalizer was a really good film. He's a... He's an... Oh, no, I think he's a great actor. I think he's really good. Have you not seen interviews with him? No. He's so rude and so... Oh, really? I don't and now I don't like him. Well, that's disappointing, actually. That saddens me. I quite... You ever see that movie where he... Isn't he always trying to control a big device? A plane, or a, you see that one where he's in a train. Oh, he I don't has know. to top a run, stop a runaway train no, for that's about not five one. hours. Is that um no? It's the worst thing ever. I've not seen that one. I didn't like it. Um, something else I want to mention is Chronicle. Oh, you watched that? I watched it. How is it? No, so it's on you in the top ten. Ten, yeah. Oh. It's like a seven. Uh oh. Aspects of it I really liked. Because it's about a guy Don't who's beat around the bush. Who is social? No, I'm serious. He's he's socially awkward. He's he's hard to let's not be talk to. The bush. <laughs> That's a uh, David Dickinson thing, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, he's he's like he's hard to get along with, and he's awkward in school. And he buys a video camera, okay. and he starts filming and vlogging. And I'm thinking, I can relate to this. He's filming everything, and he's he's, ta- he's telling the thoughts to the camera. Uh-huh. He's filming himself eating his lunch for no reason, just to have it. And I, I like that, that those sort of things. And then it's Michael B. Jordan, who's in uh, Crete, and someone else. And um, they find this pit underground, they go underground, and they get superpowers. And I'm thinking, okay, cool, and they can fly and stuff, and it's really cool. And then, as every sort of big movie like that, where it's sort of um, surreal when they get superpowers, the main character gets drunk with the power and starts blowing up buildings. And again, too much. Uh, just shaking my head, and the acting becomes bad, and that's just, they're shouting and screaming, and his mum's dying. Like in some there's some parts where his dad is shouting at him and in the background you can just hear coughing, which is his mum coughing. But I don't want to hear coughing in my earphones when I'm watching a film. So we things like that I didn't like, and those parts of it I really, really detested. Detested, hated. Oh, Ewan's not gonna be happy. Hated, Ewan. But there's really nice bits in it, like with the, with the video camera. It's very dark. Yeah, it was was late. It's over there. Oh, sorry, I'll leave you for a minute. Um, yeah, Chronicle. I mean, it's, I think it's, a, it's an interesting movie. It's good for the youth of the world, but and it's good, you know, if you want superpowers. And you think if you had superpowers, it's good if you want superpowers, if you had superpowers and you could fly, that's what it would be like. You would go up and sit on the top of tall buildings and conversate, conversate and converse <laughs> with your friends, right? You would do that. Conversate and fly through the clouds and stuff. You would do that, but you wouldn't. It mom. gets too much. And you'd blow <laughs> your mum and blow. And again, it's like it's like Independence Day. All we had to do was like make a plane crash or blow up a building but no it's like the whole, the whole world is done because there's one boy who's in superpowers yeah, and, and there's a love interest though. that's kind of cute and I don't know the girl in it who's also vlogging is really hot but she's like our age so it's like it's alright to say that right okay um, I mean it was alright I gave it a 5 I think but it was better than, it, was be- it was better than Independence I gave it a 6 better than Independence Day okay you have a six. Well, you is not going to be happy. Um, it's the weirdest thing. It's on your top two hundred. Because well, another thing I was thinking as well. After it, I was still thinking about it. Like if a film can evoke that sort of emotion, that's it. All right. It was. I was like, I went to the toilet after it, and I was looking at myself in the mirror, and I was thinking about it. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of creepy. Hey. Just looking at yourself, thinking about a movie. Ah, you know, I was. I was yeah, just like. Okay. I was like, wow, that was weird. And I was still thinking about it. It, it got some emotion out of me, which is hard to do these days. Um, and I've got a trilogy I want to talk about, which I'll do in the next episode. Uh, what else have we been watching? Grand Budapest Hotel was the last one. Resurrection of Jake the Snake on Netflix. Jake the Snake Roberts is an old wrestler. Became a junkie. And then there's this old wrestler called DDP, Diamond Dallas Page, who starts a yoga campaign in real life. Oh, right. It's a and true story. True st- it's a documentary. Oh, it's a documentary. <coughs> and uh, he starts a yoga campaign, and he's, he's done for ages, and wrestlers do it to sort of... A yoga body. A yoga programme. I thought you said yogurt. <laughs> yogurt camping with a nice His face beauty. on like pity fruit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh. DDP, he, he, he phones Jake the Snake who's like dying and starts some of this yoga and he saves his life and stuff. It's really nice. Okay. It's good. Independence Day, The Longest Yard. You ever seen that? I've seen that. Really, it's such a good it's Saturday funny. Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon on the telly film. It's awesome. Yeah. I love it. And uh, The Naked Gun I watched last night. I mean, keeping note of everything. 
I haven't, damn it. And I've got a trilogy I'm going to talk about in the next episode. So can we call it a day for that one? Yeah, And well, then in the next episode we're going to do a sort of Q&A sort of thing. Yeah, we've got a, a big uh, questionnaire. Yeah. That we're going to answer, both yeah. answer. As briefly as we can. Uh, it's, yeah. We don't want to do one too long, like 53 minutes. I mean, who listens to this bitch? Yeah, for 53 minutes. Better than an hour and a half. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if there's anyone, honestly, and please... Do contact one of us. I think I know what you're going to say, and I think I think you're, I think there is. But carry on. If yeah, if there's anyone who listened to the entire last episode, I think so. Yeah, because it was what an hour and twelve. I think an hour and twelve minutes long. If you listened to that entire episode, listened to it. Gold star. Gold star, and tell us. Yeah. Uh, message one of us. Honestly. Where and where can they message you? Um, on Twitter. On Twitter, at Aaron. Underscore, underscore Docker and at CM42 TV and at The Good Bit Pod. Uh, that'll be in the link in the description. Tell us on that or message us on Facebook and we'll give you a shout out um, yeah. the next time we can. Um, well, you would though because I came there. You'd want to know what the, what the number one is. But then some of I, I, I know people who have gone, I'll go to about 30 minutes and I'll skip to. Uh, yeah, that's one. true. I got to number seven or something. Yeah, so like, <laughs> why why listen to that? that. So listen, if you've <laughs> listened to all of our top 15s, gold star to you, tell us. We'll give you a shout out, and we'll um, we'll um, don't know. We'll <laughs> we'll message you back, and then we'll do something with you. We'll play a game with you. I don't know. No one's playing with you. You want to play a game? Because <laughs> because no one's probably well. If you like messaging, if you. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, let's move Stop on. Um, thank you for listening to uh, this. Has been episode number six of, of the, the Good, Good Bit Pod Movie Podcast here on iTunes. Subscribe if you Entertainment can. Entertainment podcast. We talk about music a lot. Yeah, we do. Well, we did that episode. Music Madness Movies. That's this episode. Okay. Um, and uh, leave a rating <laughs> on iTunes. And if you can comment, you can subscribe on iTunes or follow us on Twitter and podomatic.com. Uh, Message in if you've listened to the last one all yeah. the way through. And, uh, Listen to the next one because you'll find out a lot about us and Ooh. our movie tastes in the next episode. And our personal lives. Yeah. And it's just going to be us two because we forgot to invite anyone. <laughs> We're just gonna win. We don't have we don't have Ewan's misery corner this week. Yeah. But uh, oh, but I did that about Independence well, Day. Sure. Yeah. Well, Ewan's been stuck in his misery corner, so we'll let him free in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And coming up soon, we'll have um, the mighty Ross and Michelle will be on in a future episode. I'm sure they will. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Very much. I'm going to talk about um, bad stories with Ross. It's going to be great fun. Bad stories. I get one by the way, but I'm thinking we can talk about movies. Yeah, it could be. We can talk. We can talk about music. I love talking about music. Also. Yeah, huh. and we were looking at um, records, vinyls. Oh, oh, yeah. Right, let's. Like, we better cut it off. We've got so much to talk about. Next, next episode. Thanks for listening to episode number six of the Good Bit Movie Podcast. My name is Chris Moffat. My name is Aaron Docker. And thank you for listening. Tune in next time. Thank you very, very much. Bye. <laughs> Long pause.